We did it. We ascended into the light. We're getting closer and closer to the outside world. Just a little bit, we're taking little baby steps. You know, it may seem a massive distance. But don't worry, we're gonna get there. We're actually gonna get there. Why do I need this? Nothing in the world to stop me now! Alert! You are sick, sick! You must be exterminated! Exterminate! 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 Okay, so this is my current setup for doing the digitizing of the Doc 2 cassettes and if I want to vinyl records as well. Now over time I've used many different uh, cassette decks for doing this. So let's take a look at uh, three of them right here. So I've, I've actually got a fourth one at home which I've used as well but basically when it comes to playback it matters uh, less as long as you've got something semi-decent. It's mainly when it comes to recording is when you want a more higher end deck. Well, basically, the main thing is, and I can show you very easily with this one, is Dolby Noise Reduction, particularly Dolby B Noise Reduction. And all of these decks, including the Sony, and yes, this Technics one, all have Dolby B. The Technic one, the, sorry, Kenwood one, can't read, also has Dolby C, which was actually an advantage with some that didn't have very good noise reduction encoded on them. That does help, because previously I had used for the Power of the Daleks and the initial Evil of the Daleks releases that I released was this JVC boombox. Now, it's a really good boombox, and it is a decent cassette player. However, since it doesn't have the Dolby noise reduction, it means that I have to manually apply noise reduction to it. Now, basically what I'm doing now at the time of recording this is doing a new digitization of the early Cyberman David Banks cassette. And this is on a Chrome tape with Dolby noise reduction. Basically what that means is it's a better quality cassette because it's better quality tape and as noise reduction it basically saves a bit more time in the editing for the restoration and as you can see I'm just recording it live in Audacity and afterwards I'll go back and basically I go through each bit removing as much noise as possible. Now you might be thinking why am I redoing cassettes I've already done well, I've just explained for the Dolby noise reduction, but also the better, I've gotten better equipment since then, obviously. And also, I've gotten better at uh, restoring them to better quality. So, that's essentially why I'm doing this and why I'm calling it uh, Restored, uh, Dr. Sex Restored Version 2. And probably someday I will probably do a Version 3. Also of note is, um, if we take a look in this drawer, I've actually got several versions. In, just about see here, there's Power of the Daleks, but there's Power of the Daleks as well. I've actually got several versions of each one, usually in job lots. And generally, some of them, the cassettes are in better condition than others. But some of them which are more difficult to do if I can find the right one ah yes this one was uh, the most difficult one to do Doctor Who, The Secrets of Doctor Who Tape 2 which is the Peter Davison interview this one I have had a very long time however this one it was only yesterday at the time of recording which was the 22nd of um, February 2020, where I was finally able to properly digitise it. And the reason was, is the cassette itself needed lubricating. 
No, that's not a dirty thing if you're thinking that. That's for later. No, basically, um, the cassette kept stopping because it, the machines kept thinking it was at the end because the cassette would pull. So it needed lubricating, but also uh, the tape itself also needed cleaning. And it was a long job in order to do that. But finally, I was um, able to do that last night. So that one's good size. And also, uh, since it's not a long one, it didn't take very long to restore. So basically, this is how it's all done and made. And also, this is a actually very new purchase at the time of recording. Literally, I got this a couple of days ago. This is my new old turntable. And uh, the turntable I had beforehand, which is this one, this 1970s BSR turntable. I do prefer the look of this one. However, this one I kept having to repair in the past couple of months. And to be honest, I was getting sick of doing it. So... I got a new one, and I will be also doing some digitizations of some uh, Doctor Who records. For example, the Doctor Who variations on a theme. One of the themes that uh, Batman March uses, I will be doing a new digitization using this, because this one, despite not looking as nice, is actually a better turning table than the other one. So, yeah, and now I will get back onto it. Okay, alright, I'm recording this on the somethingth of February, I think it's the 26th today, if I remember rightly, 2020, so anyway, um, I may just grab this off camera, and cut it with a knife. And um, yeah, I'll open it. I'm trying to pull something off it. Oh, okay, so inside a bit of paper, we've got a bit of cardboard. Oh dear, slight crack, although I think that was on the actual thing. So I picked this up for about, I think it was a tenner or something on eBay, which is pretty good for what this, for this, because uh, they do vary in price actually quite a bit, these. But it's a CD that is fairly rare. The Tenth Planet soundtrack. And for some reason the tracks and everything is laid out uh, this way. Which is uh, really weird. And uh, there it is. It's a very blank looking CD. Hello. And it, I guess no, it's got a barcode on the actual CD itself. And on the front bit here. And on the back, they love their bloody barcodes. Anyway, yeah, let's have a look at the booklet itself. Not a whole lot. Looks, uh, yeah, you can pause to. Read this in your own time. Yeah, um, so basically I will be ripping this, obviously. And, um, I don't know if this actually is already, it probably is already available on YouTube, but if you want to, um, the MP3s of, of this rip, uh, with the artwork on there, then... Just let, just let me know. In fact, I might even put a link in the description itself. I don't know if the picture showed a slight crack on it. Um, hmm. The answer is, uh, as ever, yes, it did. There's, a, there's the crack on the back. And there's the crack on the front. But nevertheless, uh, good price to get. And the CD looks immaculate. So, yeah, I'll be uh, ripping this and... Um, Listening to it later. Okay, unfortunately I can't really show you the packet for this because it's got the seller's address and my address that could be copied and pasted all over the packet. But anyway, I can show you what they are. And I got these for £3 plus £2 postage. So, 
first thing, Power of the Daleks. I don't actually own a CD copy of this, so now I do. This is the more standard variant and not the um, slightly rarer uh, MP3 CD with the reconstruction on there, but whatever. And then My Life as a Dalek, presented by Mark Gatiss, which uh, has been on eBay for five for quite a while now. But anyway, let's have a look at them. Okay, that's actually incorrect uh, title sequence for Power of the Daleks. Yeah, the CDs look in good condition. To be honest, I will not... I don't think I'll even bother ripping these. Um, or probably listening to them because... Uh, well, one, I've heard it before. And it's on there, the Power of the Daleks uh, Blu-ray and DVD. With the one of the shittest recons you've ever seen in your life. Okay. Yep. Great. Uh, so this one is narrated by um, Annika Wills. And, um... One of the reasons it is, is because for the cassette release, they actually lost the Tom Baker um, audio. Now, thankfully, um, the cassettes of Power of the Dark is pretty easy to come by, and I have digitised it and restored it to the best of my ability, so just search up that video and you can download it, as well as all the other Doctor Who cassettes that I own for absolutely nothing as standard MP3s. Anyway... Let's get on to my life as a Dalek. Uh, running time, 30 minutes. Bloody hell, that's really short. So this one I will be ripping. And hey, we guess a little advertising thing. Yeah, not a lot on this one whatsoever. Uh, he's unfortunate. But anyway, for £5 total, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with these and I'm glad to have both of them in my collection because I have to get every copy of Power of the Daleks that I can find. So that means now I have the regular DVD release in the UK, the Steelbook, uh, for the UK, the cassette version and the CD. And no doubt uh, they'll probably release it on uh, vinyl at some point. So, yay for that. All right. Okay, hopefully the lighting is all um, perfectly set up and everything will go fine. Here's a packet. And um, okay. Rip this a bit off camera. This cost me, I think, about a fiver or thereabouts. But it's this Doctor Who and the Pescatons. Now, this, the CD release actually um, of this is fairly rare. You can find it, but not normally. The price of it actually has gone down considerably since it had a re-release on uh, vinyl which I do actually own and I even own the cassettes of this one of the cassette releases and even a prototype cassette of it um so to be honest I, the reason I got this is because this version is a two disc version which has supposedly an exclusive interview with Elizabeth Sladen now I'll be sleeving illustration. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna have a read of this myself, and um, try and work out. Uh, when this was released, this version. So 
So I'm guessing 2005. At least um, from the information that is stated on the back. And it says if we just look at the information in here. Uh, I can't remember where it was that said it. But the interview with Elizabeth Sling was recorded or was from 2004. Which I will be ripping. And if the BBC don't give me a bollocking, I'll uh, try and get it uploaded to YouTube if I can. If not, then um, I'll add a download link. But yeah, it'll be... And also I'll rip the Doctor and the Pescatons for myself as well. Be nice to have on a CD. It's a bit wobbly, this one. Actually, it doesn't want to stay in. You can see some of the others. In the range. Yeah, the CD case is weird where the CDs themselves don't really fit in. They kind of just um, balance. Yeah, it's just kind of a balancing. It doesn't have a real proper click in. It's just kind of balancing there. Might explain why it's not uh, closing properly. I guess no, it's that's that way up on the side. Okay. But uh, yeah, again, uh, different artwork. Yeah, now that every release of Doctor and the Pescatongs, they keep they kept revising the artwork. This one looks completely different. Uh, there's a later cassette release that's in a double cassette case that has completely different artwork, and then there's the more recognisable. Um, original LP release so yeah they kept changing the artwork so the look of the monster just kept on changing but regardless it's nice to finally have that so yay okay so this thing is not that interesting I've actually left it for a couple of days and forgotten to open it but um, I did get this off of eBay for uh, two pound plus three pound delivery, so it came out to a fiver. And it's something a lot of you will own, and technically I own a version of this, just not this particular version. Genesis of the Daleks. Now, I do own the singular version of this, um, several times over, actually. Um, I own the singular version on CD, because it was included with the fourth got to time capsule and i do have the original 70s vinyl of this as well as the set but this also includes exploration earth which ooh, is interesting Okay, that artwork for some reason. Yeah, it's annoying that uh, most of them are broken. Okay. Never noticed uh, how shit the Daleks kind of look. Because you only kind of see Michael Wishes Gavros. But there we go. The disc itself, it looks um, fine. Yeah, uh, Genesis of the Daleks, actually, the standard. Um, vinyl and cassette release. Actually, no, I don't think the vinyl has this, but the cassette release, it actually cuts a few seconds short. Whereas I don't think the vinyl and the CD don't, but the cassette does just to fit it on. Cassette's got bloody bits of plastic. I just literally, I just emptied out bits of plastic out of there. Yeah, not good. Although, to be honest, I'll be ripping this anyway. Let's uh, have a look at the booklet. I was just about to say, is that a giant market, but I realise it's a sewer green. Oh, that's some black and white. Normally the advertisements um, are in colour. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay. Is Exploration Earth... Is that like a mini-story? Let's just work it out. Uh, it's just about... 15-ish minutes long. Just drive 20 minutes. I think it's just something else to put on the CD to... Make it so it fits on, to be honest, uh, more than anything else. But, alright, okay. Well, that was that. Nick Nat Paddywhack. Meh. Okay, this one really quick. I went to B&M and bought another one of these. No, I did not purposely go in to just buy one of these. I actually was going in to buy... Um, other things like uh, some tins of soup, toilet roll and kitchen roll but I was literally standing in the massive queue for the checkout and I saw and I just thought uh, go on then <laughs> <laughs> yeah so th this is my fifth one I think by the way yeah I've got three here and I think I've, I know I've got at least two at home so I've now got five of these so yeah, I'm getting a cyber... I've got a, a, a small Cyberman army, so... Yay for all of that! Here's a packet here, and I can't really show you the rest of it because it's got the seller's address on one side and my own on another. And um, I don't have any permanent marker or tear for Max to cover that up. So... Ah, I thought it was this, okay. So the seller actually never marked this as dispatched. But uh, it has come pretty quickly. So yes, this is uh, from the same seller I got the last lot of Big Finish cassettes from. And um, I was going to buy more than just this one. Uh, because they did actually have a few... They did have um, ones like um, the Holy Terror, and what was the other one? The Genocide Machine, and a couple of other others that were being interesting. However, those ones went for over twenty quid, which I was just like, no, no, I'm not paying that much. This one, however, this one I bought for three pound sixty plus postage, which came at around about just shy of six quid. So this is the Land of the Dead. Set. So again, uh, both looking in pretty good condition. Again, they've come a bit unwound, so I'll just wind them up. But uh, yeah, um, I can't remember when Big Finish actually stopped doing cassettes. I don't know. I know that um, it's only their early releases, but I don't know. I know they stopped before... Zagreus. They stopped before number 50, but I'm just wondering what was actually their last uh, one in the range. I'm wondering because there's very little information out there about them. But yeah, this is nice to have in the collection and all nice, well, and good. Now, this is what happens when you forget that you put a bid on something else. And I've actually had that. Uh, I've actually had this for nearly a week now, and I've just been waiting for this one. Cause I didn't want to just do the unboxing of this one or something. So yeah, I've got another mutant phase, which I actually forgot that I um, bought. So basically, I've got two. However, this one, uh, the box isn't cracked and everything, so you know it's in nicer condition. I'm debating um, whether to sell one of them. The other one, so if, if you would like the other one that I've got of the Mutant Fears on cassette, then yeah, let me know in the comments below. And, uh, maybe we can arrange something out. Um, just notice this one has the Big Finish logo in the corner. Does this one? Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, I thought we just had it in. Yeah, weird. Big Finish logo, no Big Finish logo. But uh, just like these CD releases, they are numbered. So, yay for, for all of that. Now, 
Here's the problem. Oh, oh this is heavy. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put the camera up a bit for this. So, this is my Doctor Who cassette drawer. Uh, well, I should say, clarify, this is my Doctor Who cassette drawer that I keep the doubles in. So basically, any of the double cassettes go in here. The only exception is uh, this John Pert we interview, which is just a cassette in card. That's in card, which doesn't really fit on my other cassette drawers, so that's why it goes in here. So this thing now is, you know, getting pretty full. And a lot of these are actually doubles. So, uh, well, actually, no, none of these are doubles, I think, anymore. But we'll have a look. We'll have a look. I am conspiracy. Okay, so that's a fury. Ah, there is two Paradise of Death in here, so I can remove one of them and put that in a different drawer. Um, all right, so you can all see. I'm going to put this one in here. So, yeah, um, I'm just showing you this purely just so you can have a look. Power. And right away, there's two copies of Evil. So this one's in worse than this one, that one can go out of there. And then, Mutant Fears can slot nicely in, the, in there. And these will just go in a separate drawer on their own, but yeah. If you're wondering what these are, uh, these are, most of these are masters of, um, cassettes that I've done, the, the CD masters. Because what I used to do is record from a CD. In fact, actually, I can show you exactly what I used to use before I got the nicer equipment. This boombox, which is a late 90s one, this is the exact boombox I used to record, and I did, would just literally record off the CD. And the thing is, the recordings it made, while they didn't have Dolby noise reduction, they did sound pretty good, actually, mainly because they were coming from a digital source, so to be honest, there was a lot less noise than there would have been if I was recording from an analogue source. So. That's what I used to do. I don't do that anymore. Um, I actually use now a proper deck with Tolby being noise reduction. But there's also a couple of other things in here. So these, which I don't think I've shown in a video before. This is the Sixec Productions 2009-2019 Prototype Discs 1 and 2. And uh, these have never been released because uh, I cancelled the release. Basically I was going to be releasing a DVD box set of all my um, film productions that I've done since 2009-2019. When I was going to, at the time with new special features. Um, and all sorts, but uh, basically it generated no interest, so they're just there. I only ever made the prototypes, discs one and two. It was going to be a six disc set. So, yeah. But anyway, these will go in a separate drawer, and this will go back in its drawer. Eventually, I'm probably just going to have to have just two drawers of these doubles uh, cassettes, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, so... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But it is nice to have these um, in the collection. Something, uh, I don't know if it'll be relevant at the time this video goes out, but at the time of recording this, 
uh, if you saw my video on Power of the Daleks, a uh, special edition, where I did a video on its announcement and what I thought about it, uh, they announced that um, the cassette version, this version, which I spent hours and hours uh, digitizing and then, well, the digitizing didn't take long, but the restoration took quite a while. They announced that it would be included on the Power of the Dark Special Edition, which either means A, they found the Tom Baker recordings, which is possible, B, they were never lost in the first place, and that was just a rumor, or C, they've actually taken um, one of their cassettes and done exactly what I've done and just took the Tom Baker narration because the Tom Baker narration is in decent enough quality on the cassettes and they uh, just done that and also I forgot about and also um, I forgot about this one do, doing it but uh, also I forgot that Macro was also included on the Macro Terror um, animated release as well the cassette version of that but uh, I don't think the narration by Colin Baker. I don't think that one was ever lost, or at least presumably not, but yeah, so eh, whatever, that video is still going to stay up where you can get all the downloads for them because that Arcasex on here that the BBC I know will never release because some of them are not BBC ones, like that John Pertwee interview uh, the David Banks cassettes and um, other little oddity ones here and there, so yeah Oh boy, this bit went on far too long, didn't it? Moving on. Okay, so it's the 6th of May today, and, uh we've got a package. Hooray, hooray, hooray. There we go. So, this, actually, you know what, I'll just put it down and zoom in, actually. So, this is the novelization of the TV movie, narrated by Paul McGann. I just bought this because it was, I found it cheap, and, uh, you know, it's like a Doctor Who cassette that I don't have. So, yeah, what's the running time on this? Two hours, 40 minutes, across two cassettes. And here they are. Again, they need a... They've uh, come a bit unwound. So, what I'll do just behind me is I'll just pop them in this cassette deck. And rewind them. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see... They've got no Dolby noise reduction on these, unfortunately. <clears throat> and before someone asks, no, I'm not going to bother digitising these. To be honest, I don't even know if I'll listen to them. To be quite frank, it was more just to have them in the collection. I don't know, I might digitise them. Just for myself, I don't. I'm not really overly fussed, because uh, you can get this elsewhere, I do believe. Inside, this will look very familiar if you've ever got a Doctor Who VHS from the late 90s. So, yeah. It is all very nice, well and good, so... Yeah, uh, overall, uh, pretty satisfied, pretty happy with that. So it's just a it's just a nice little it's just a nice little something, isn't it? To be honest, um, the TV movie, one of my thoughts on it, it's it's uh, well, you have to ignore a lot of stuff in it, and I do wish, hopefully, one day we will actually get a true uh, Blu-ray release of it, because uh, the actual Blu-ray release of the TV movie is just going to upscale. Now, supposedly, either the film prints of it are either missing, or um, Fox, uh, I think it's Fox, who were in conjunction with this, just will flat out not release them for whatever reason. So, yeah, but anyway, that's it, and um, yeah, happy days. 
Okay, so we have a packet here. We have a knife here. This is going to be difficult to open up, unfortunately. Because it's one of those things that's very tightly compacted in what it is. So come on, we can do it. It's uh, the 13th of um, May today, so May the 13th. So yay for that. Anyway, this is what I got and you can see there's a message. Okay, so great, um, take that off. So, another big finish cassette, the Spectre of Lan Langley, Langham, Mo Dyslexic, Mo, there we go, <laughs> which is um, one of the few instances of the Sixth Doctor meeting the Brigadier. So, yay. And also, um, I think this is the first mention of uh, Doris, you know, chronologically. So, yay. Um, some people don't like this story, uh, so it's, uh, but it's worth it for the Brigadier for me. I think it's worth it for the Brigadier, dear, and I do really like this story. I think it is an, a really good story, this one. I'm not saying it's amaz the most amazing one, but it is a really good and really enjoyable story. Apologies, uh, my camera's battery actually ran out during that. But uh, as I was saying, this is a really good and really enjoyable story, in my opinion. Which you can actually listen to for free on Spotify. So it is available on Spotify. But uh, if not, it's three quid. Uh, always to buy as a digital download from Big Finish. It was actually on sale not too long ago for £1.50. So yeah. Anyways, you can see information on the back. And it is also nice to have a physical release of it. Again, no Dolby noise reduction, unfortunately. So uh, that is, yeah, shame. But then again, this was kind of like standard because they thought, well, why bother paying Dolby and everything to put it on? We can save a bit of money. Yay. Again, as I said, they should re... To be honest, Big Finish could start, uh, technically, you know, re-releasing uh, some of their audios on cassette again. Because of uh, the cassette comeback. It's not as big as the vinyl comeback. But it is still there because, for example, most uh, music artists generally uh, release their new albums. Um, Normally in much more limited quantities, but still release on cassette. So, you know, big finish, that's something you could do. If not, then I could just do it myself if I want to, so, eh, whatever. But, uh, yeah, th there it is. And I can't remember how much I paid for this. So, I'll uh, grab the trusty phone and go to my eBay. And it will tell me exactly how much I paid for this so I paid three pound plus two pound fifty postage so I came to five pound fifty for this so yeah overall not a bad price for it and overall they're uh, happy and satisfied with it so yay for that um I don't know I don't really know what else to say what number is this yeah number nine so it is an early one in the run so you're more likely to find more of these than ones that were leased around in the run, so... Yeah. That's, that's basically it. Yay. Alright, um, I meant to show this when I was unboxing uh, the big finish cassette of earlier, but I forgot. I did get another one of the Silver Nemesis sets. Uh, I think I've had this now for nearly a week. So this is my sixth Silver Nemesis set, so I, I've got six of them now. So, 
got quite an army of uh, Silver Nemesis Cybermen, so... Yay for that, um... Nothing really else to say other than that, so... Happy days. Okay, today is the... Good question, actually. What, what day is it today? It is... The 18th of May. 2020. Hooray, hooray, hooray. And, uh, as you can see, we've got, say, packaging from to me. So, let's open this. Now, this package cost me £16, plus £1.20 postage. So, what could it be? I know exactly what it could be, because I bought it. But... Yeah. Some of you already recognise what it'll be. And literally, as soon as I start recording, I can hear the neighbours are starting to play bloody music again. Next door. And I actually went out to them yesterday and asked them to turn it down, and they actually did, but unfortunately they've seemed to have forgotten about that again today. But anyway, um, apologies if you can hear that, hopefully you can't over that. But anyway, this is the first Doctor Adventures Volume 4. Yep, so I actually paid, and this is brand new, it's, it is brand new sealed, so yeah, I paid uh, 16 quid for this, plus £1.20 postage on eBay. And you might be thinking, how are they able to charge so little for this? And, you know, why are big finishes generally a lot cheaper on eBay? Well, there's a simple reason why. Is that uh, when people buy Big Finish, if you don't know this, if you buy Big Finish from Big Finish's website and you buy a physical copy, a CD copy, you get the digital copy included as well. So what a lot of people do is just sell the physical copy brand new on eBay uh, to basically subsidise the cost and they've still got a digital copy on their account. So in terms, that is why. So yeah but anyway um, I bought the story obviously because of the story Return to Scarrow and we've also got uh, another one as well so yay but anyway yeah uh, let's open this up I did actually get the uh, no, the um, First Doctor Adventures uh, Volume 1 which uh, was pre pretty good And David Bragley is, you know, if you thought David Bragley was bad as the first Doctor in Twice Upon a Time, that, that isn't a do with his performance, that was to do with the shit writing. But in in Big Finish, he's actually uh, really good as the first Doctor, actually. So, anyway, let's slide this out. And uh, I will be ripping this, so, okay, it's just two individual CDs. Yeah, I thought, yeah, when I was sliding that out, I thought it would be a jewel case. But it's not, it's two individual CDs. And one of them is clearly broken. Unfortunately, it's probably gotten dropped at some point. Which is, uh, irritating. Anyway, return to Scarrow. And this is the nice thing, you can flip these round. So, now normally, actually normally they have this, when you can flip them around, they normally have the first Doctor 1 in black and white, but they haven't here. Well, see, that looks much better anyway, because you can see just more of the artwork, because it's not cut off. Obviously I can't really comment on the story, because I haven't listened to it yet. But uh, I will be ripping it to MP3, and listening to it on my phone. There you go, there's volume one, which is the only one that I do have out of this range. And this, obviously it's going to fall off. Again, I'll take this uh, booklet out. You can see more of the artwork. 
Actually, they haven't cut this one off like they did on that one, but I'll be flipping it around anyway. But uh, there we go. So knowing that that broke, it's clearly being dropped in the post at some point. There we go. But, yeah, I could always replace it with a standard uh, two-disc jewel case. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Other, other than that, you know, pretty happy with it. I'm um, happy at the price I got for it, because that's even cheaper than getting the download-only version, which is uh, £20. So this way, I'll have both. So, yeah. Other than that, that's it for this uh, bit of the unboxing experience, I guess. Yay. Okay, so it's pretty bright in there. Far too fucking hot today. What did it do? What is today's date? The 21st of May. And it is far, far too hot. I've had barely any sleep at night. Yeah. Typical of a lockdown. The lockdown happens when it's so fucking hot. Anyway, I got these off eBay. It was they were 99p plus four pound delivery, so five a total. And it is Doctor Who the scripts for, as you can see, Tomb of the Cybermen and Galaxy Four. Wasn't really bothered about the one for Galaxy Four, more Tomb of the Cybermen. And to be honest, more than anything else, I mainly bought these for the artwork. The artwork for these, it is just fantastic. I do really love this out. Actually, you know what? I wasn't going to bring my lights out because I thought uh, surely there's enough lights here. But uh, you know what? Let's let's bring bring a bit more light to the situation. There we go. A little bit, a little bit battered, and there's some splodges of some food or something on there. But uh, I'll clean that. But yeah, it is literally the scripts. Same with Galaxy 4. Actually, uh, yeah, Galaxy 4 script is a little bit thinner. Again, really nice artwork and that on the front. Nice chumbly on the back. Yeah. So um, overall, very happy to have both of these in my collection, and I'm happy at the price that I paid for them. Again, not too bad about this one, more bothered about doing the same, but nevertheless, for you know, a five for both, can't really argue there. Four pound delivery though was a bit expensive. Like this could not cost four pound delivery. I can see by the thing. It's let's see. £2.14 yeah this cost £2.14 to post as a large letter so yeah they, they've kind of ripped me off of it there but yeah, I'm not even really that bothered to be honest because uh, you know I've still got a good deal on it so um, yeah happy on that <laughs> so the dogs were real I think about my imagination well, it's not the first time I've been wrong. Right. Okay. I'm high mind up in against the Alec. And it's gonna quickly destroy this being. What the hell am I gonna do this time? You were supposed to be trapped in this reality! You must not escape it! You must not escape it! You must be destroyed! Destroyed! Destroy! Eliminate! Search! Search! Seek locate! Exterminate! He's coming. How'd this get over here through the other way? Oh well, doesn't matter. Exterminate! <laughs> He's getting the bit. Right! Now I'm gonna get you. Keep away! Keep away from me! Keep away! Assist! 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 I require assistance! 
immediate, immediate teleport, immediately, immediately, teleport, alert, alert, teleport me, assist, teleport, assist! Of course it had to teleport away at the last second. Oh well. To be honest, I don't really know where I was going to go with it from there. I kind of just like... Eh. Yeah. Because this dart doesn't exactly rely on static. And it's not like I have any Dalek bombs anyway. So what was I going to do? I don't know. Well, you think you're doing better. Well, I think you did perfectly fine, I did. Okay. Well, good. Are we both good? Are we all good? Yes? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Now, what do we do if they come back? And also, why does that dog just go away like that? Well, it makes sense. If it wriggled hard enough, it could get free. We'll just call the others. Why did it go? Why? Why haven't they killed me yet? Why? Do you know? Oh, are you legitimately asking now? Yeah. No idea. Oh. It's maybe because they like you so much. Okay, Tommy was out. <laughs> Daleks. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. There's no one there. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> okay. Right, we're good because my knee is hurting off this ground. Okay. I probably shouldn't be touching this bin. Difficult for them to spot me. Ideally, I shouldn't really be wearing burgundy. But, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any green shirts at the minute. So, that's all I have to do. Hopefully, it's some ogrons and they just think I'm a dead corpse. What do you think? Do you think they'll pass? find out. Um, so yes, this is this is what I have to do. So, just keep rummaging round. You never know. You never know. Oh, bugger. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. I will weave my way out of here. They will never see me coming. Yes. I am invisible to them. Invisible. Nailed it. <laughs> I've nailed invisibility. Something the Daleks tried to do on Spyragon. I have nailed it now. Oh, actually, oh. it's not that comfortable actually. So there's a slight ditch in the middle. So, next time next time but at least we are slowly entering 
INTO THE LIGHT! Even though I want to crawl back into the dark right now.